Uh, today is Tuesday, August 8th, 2023. I'm Steve Shields. I'm president of RES Korea. We're really glad to have you join us. We're thank you, uh, thank you so much for coming out tonight. Uh, friends of Stefan are here and we welcome you uh, to our lecture tonight. Um, first of all, I need to express RES Korea's sincere thanks to the Asia Development Foundation who has continued funding us uh, with very generous support for several years. We also thank COAT, the venue that we are in, for partnering with us to provide a venue for our lectures. We encourage you to patronize the Chosun Salon, and I know many of you were in there before. Uh, when we have the lecture ending, we also gather over there for the RAS After Dark event. And it's another chance to just chat a little bit more. And if Stefan's got time and can stay for a little bit, maybe ask him some more questions and so on. Uh, patronizing the Chosun Salon helps support Coat, who helps support us. You're cordially reminded that lecture content does not necessarily reflect the opinions of or positions of the Royal Asiatic Society Korea. My legal job is done. Tonight, we're joined by Stefan Mo. His lecture is titled Flow and Order, Seoul Waterways and Other Urban Stitches. I, I always invite our speakers to come up with a creative title that's catchy that might bring people in. And I think he wins the prize for his title tonight. And you'll have to listen to the lecture to find out what he means. Uh, <clears throat> Stefan is my junior. If uh, you who speak Korean know Sunday Hube stuff. Uh, <clears throat> he was born in Paris in 1967. So he's 11 years younger than me. Uh, he first came to Seoul, first met Seoul, he says, in 1991 as a young ESSEC <laughs> alum at the French Embassy's economy section. What's the ESSEC? <laughs> Business school. Okay, great. That's, no, that's okay. I just, it's probably a cold something something. I'm not good with French. Oh, you know it. Okay, great. Um, anyway, uh, He's still a fiction writer, too, and, and he's, he's got several uh, uh, titles to his credit, but uh, he's, he's, he looks at innovation and strategy, but he's drawn to the urban environment and how that has grown and changed. You know, coming in 91, you know, he's got a good 30 years or so of watching how Seoul has transformed and changed uh, over the decades. So... Um, uh, Stefan and Sol, I love his, his sentence. So Stefan and Sol have been haunting each other for three for over three decades. I love them haunting each other. So let's give Stefan a warm welcome. Now I've got my leash. Your leash, yeah. All right, working. I'm not working. Okay. Thank you, Steve. I, I want to thank the Royal Asian Society for for the event and of course, uh, Julie and Kurt for this such a special space, place. I want to thank also each and every single one of you for, for coming, I'm very touched. Um, there is a guest who, who is too shy, he didn't come all the way here. He just stopped short a few meters from Kurt's entrance. And uh, for us, it's rather good that he didn't go all the way here because uh, it's one of Seoul waterways. Uh, I'll talk about him later. Uh, before we start, I, I will in advance ask for your forgiveness um, because uh, if you see, uh, scratch that, when you see a slide with too many words on it, uh, just please don't panic, uh, just let it flow by. Uh, it's there just to let you know that this exists. It's helped you get the big picture. Uh, please do not try to read all the slides. Uh, you're drawn. Uh, that's another way of uh, warning you that from here, it all goes downhill. All right, um, waterways. Waterways, does it work? Tell me it works. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. It worked 
There was something here which disappeared. Or tell me it doesn't. It worked perfectly minutes ago. We have a problem, Houston. I don't know what happened. Yeah, it works. So waterways, it's a um, trivial issue, but actually it's really vital for, for our city. It's we're really talking about it's very long and bloodstream. And Seoul is blessed. I mean, there are not many big capital cities with that many natural assets. We have many, many uh, mountains, and out of each of these mountains, several uh, waterways coming down, flowing down. So, and we have a problem with the slide, it's a bit too wide. Can we shorten it a bit? A bit? Uh, is it possible to? Oh, you cannot see the end. Okay, well. It's okay. Anyway, oops, no, no, all right, you can just stay here. Um, so, of course, this is too good to be true. Uh, Seoul is not that green, and many of you grew up in a city where uh, the mountains were not green, rather the color of clay, and where uh, living by a stream was uh, borderline on the sea. So, uh, I always say that Seoul is one city, but also 1,000 villages. It sounds a bit extreme, but if you just take the administrative divisions, uh, dongs, neighborhoods, you already have uh, over 400 of them. And if you count the uh, Ildong, Idong, <coughs> Samga, Saga, it's already over well over 600. But let's go back to this word, dong, the origin of it. It really refers to a shared water, really to uh, Oops, I think we have a problem here. I think we, uh, every so rewind, sorry. Um, so dong uh, means a share of water. Um, and that tells a lot about, it doesn't mean that each uh, dong has its own uh, waterway, but that's the origin of the word. Uh, of course, mountains are great dividers. If you live on either side, you don't communicate easily with the other community. But on the other hand, uh, they bring also uh, communities closer together uh, along the waterways in the valleys, which is not the case in, in the plain. And um, there are, oops. And um, yes, you can have uh, just a streamlet or, or a small hill can carve a time capsule. People living there live at a different pace than the people just living a few meters away. And that's the beauty of the city is that it's uh, full of this time capsule and not two neighborhoods live at the same pace. Um, waterways have always drawn the map of Seoul. It's true from the beginning, from the original city of uh, Hanyang to uh, the Seoul we know. Uh, well, these are the city limits of today, but the, water, uh, the waterways map is from 1915. Uh, as you can tell, it's a bit different, but basically it's the same concept. You have a big central waterway and the north and the south. So you have now the Hangang, Gangbuk, and Gangnam, and you have Cheonggyecheon, uh, Cheonbuk, and Cheonnam, except at that time we were more referring to Bukcheon and uh, Namcheon, the north and south village. There is a village which I have a special section for, which is the West Village, Sochon. And Sochon is, Sochon is uh, associated to a mountain uh, very central for Seoul, which is in Wangsan. Uh, that's a shamanic center of the city, but that's also the very source of Chongechon, with the first two tributaries, which are Egundong Chon and Ongyundong Chon. So, this, you remember, that's exactly the same axis. It's still the backbone of uh, Sochon now. It's Jamun No, the road that leads to Jamun Tono. And this is the uh, Ogindil and uh, leading to the market. Um, so a lot of good things come from Inwangsan. And for the trouble, they more often come from Seoul's biggest mountain, Kudongsan. Uh, if uh, you notice there are some differences between uh, here and there. 
um, there seem to be fewer uh, waterways or they seem to have shrunk. Likewise, between then and now, uh, it looks like uh, Seoul Smile is a bit crooked and that the dentition of the Han River has not been performed yet. That's exactly the case. You see it's totally crooked and there are teeth that are about to fall. Actually, these are islands now, then, and, and they are not islands anymore. Nanjido, Chanchigdo, and some rivers have disappeared uh, since then, like uh, Songpagang or uh, Chinchongang. Uh, so there's been a lot of work going on here. You notice also that it's much narrower in general, and that's one of the reasons why it was easier to freeze at that time. Uh, now, the Hangang is one kilometer wide. So it's 40, by the way, it's 40 kilometers uh, across Seoul. So we're talking more than 40 square kilometers. That's 7% of the surface of Seoul, just the surface of water, not counting the water side. So it's considerable. Um, I'm pretty sure that if it had remained the same uh, in the winter in 2010, 2011, we could have skated on, on, on the handguns still. It's not just, even in spite of the, uh, of the uh, uh, climate change. Um, so, all right, all right, good. Does it work? It doesn't. Okay, 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 up, down, down, it goes. If this change happened between Hanyang and 1915 Seoul and between 1915 Seoul and now, nature played a role, but it's mostly the work of man. And the story of the development of Seoul is a story of a battle and a fight of man versus nature. So on one way, you have the way of water, and then you have the highway of, of progress. Really, it's a question of, of flow and order. If, and there's a reason why we need to tame nature, because uh, water brings life, but also destruction, floods, and deaths. And nature alone can cope with the city's expansion. So we go back to our village. And it's the same pattern in every civilization. At the village level, a, a community can manage the share of resource like a, a waterway. It's always the same upstream, you keep it pristine because that's where you find your drinking water. But if it downstream, there are special places where there's a market because you need to wash after the market. And there's another space for the laundry. There's still a laundry spot, by the way, uh, right next in one salon. It's still that we, we saw crayfish there 20 years ago. Um, and uh, sometimes it's also a matter of not, not, not only location, but time, uh, because if you have a constant flow, uh, okay, we do the laundry or we do the market, but then it will be totally clean and usable afterwards. Um, and then there's waste, waste water, you, you let it go downstream. But of course, and particularly in Seoul and particularly in winter, uh, waterways don't flow all year, all year round. And furthermore, there are other people downstream. And uh, this is a ground city, all the waterways join other waterways. And then they, they, before going to the, the Hangang, uh, they are already uh, like open sewers. They, they stink, you cannot feed there, you cannot take a bath there, and you certainly cannot drink it. And it's already bad a uh, certain level, but it gets worse where all the waterways converge, which is uh, where this Chonggaechon or on which the city grew. So uh, Seoul says there are 70 tributaries uh, of the Han River, but I counted a bit more than 85 in total. So that's the reason, that's what happened to Chong Echon, which uh, died and was buried. And it's not, it's from the beginning, that there was something wrong with Chong Echon and uh, they, they had to do uh, constant maintenance and very heavy work uh, very regularly. 
and uh, when the Japanese uh, occupied the country, they tried to, to cover it already, and uh, they didn't. And then there was war and destruction, and Seoul had other fishes to fry, but Seoul kept expanding. There's a baby boom, there are displaced people, and there's uh, also uh, slums, particularly uh, around Songgechon after, after the city center. Um, and Seoul didn't have a good sewage system. There's only one in five citizens that uh, uh, was connected. And there was absolutely no water treatment until the 70s. The first one was in uh, Dunanchon, which is where uh, Tongachon lands. And then all four corners were covered uh, Nanjido, uh, Sonyodo, and uh, Tanchon. Um, water quality is measured in BOD, it's biochemical oxygen demand. Uh, and drinking water is one to two milligrams per liter. Tongan Chan in 63, it was 241. And Dunlan Chan uh, have that because it came from, it was first a, a thicker, bigger waterway. And also it came from the north. There was not many people along, along this part. And of course, not the bad towns that came later. So in 58, um, the bulldozer mayor, uh, Kim hyun decided to put a concrete lid on it. It was really a matter of public safety. And a decade later, uh, we just nailed a very big cross on that coffin. It's uh, Chongye Highway and Seon Sangha, rest in peace. Um, so we're in 1960 Seoul, and there's a lot, a lot of work to do. There's very little infrastructure, there are not enough bridges, no tunnels until Tajik Tunnel in 67. Um, the water slides are totally, oops, sorry, a bit early. Water slides are shifting all the time. There are recurring floods, all the waterways are clogged, and the population keeps booming. So uh, the homelessness caused by floods was 80,000 in 65, and 70 years later, it's uh, 237,000. So we have a lot, considerable job to do, uh, and really, pali pali, it's massive. And the answer is uh, okay, we try to fix things, but it all the answers mean more concrete everywhere. So we've seen that for the waterways, uh, they had to be covered most of the time. Uh, we had to shorten to bring the neighbors together. So we built bridges and dug tunnels to prevent the floods. There were dams built upstream and the measurements were done and the islands were drawn to the land. So expressways all the way, exchange you go all the way. So considerable job, but uh, it had a cost. Uh, basically, so expanded by negating its, uh, its uh, natural assets. The streams, we covered them. The hills, we, we shaved them off one by one. The mountains, what mountains? That's where the outcast is. That's where the Confucian uh, Ayatollah uh, Wu, the, the discarded the, the, uh, the Buddhist temples far away. It's not just because uh, they, uh, the air is better that they, they're in there. It's also because they've been uh, discarded. That's also where you have the mountains, is also where you have the Dadonne, the shanty towns. And the land itself has been uh, neutered, apartment block by apartment block, just erased. So there are green belt areas, but they are um, beaten up by chum by chum every year because that's cheaper to redevelop. And humans uh, are less important than cars. So uh, twelve lanes of traffic in the middle of the city, and uh, humans are basically pedestrians are basically uh, parasites. So if you want to cross a road, you, you go under under it or over it. So um, there is urban continuity compared to before, but it's the lowest uh, basic, most basic standard possible, and there are new big artificial dividers crisscrossing the city. And the city is cut from its natural assets, from its uh, vital systems. So, so lights are okay with it. And if you see the ads for uh, apartment blocks in, in the 90s, 
it's totally scary <laughs> if you're an urbanist, but that's the way it sells. So basically, you have this perspective, so everything is flattened. You have a mountain here, it's like, like a mosquito bike, you know, it's really nothing. The Apato, it's like towers, really tombstones, giant tombstones. Subways are supposed to be underground, but this, they are symbolized by totems that are mile high. And of course, the most beautiful assets of the city, you want to have a lot of uh, asphalt ribbons, giants around your place, because it shows that you are next to the, the exit and that you can go anywhere. That's a dream, that's a perfect dream. The bridges, it's even a verb bridge. It's to really to bring people closer together, really. And it's really the ultimate urban stitch. And if you take Chong and Chong, there are over 20 bridges and it literally stitches Chong to Nam Chong. It's, it's, you just go a few meters and you're on the other side. The Hangang is a different problem. And if you add, uh, if you add the expressway, then it's, it's very, complex noodle pack. And even Dunanshan, which is very narrow, look at Dunanshan, it's very, very short, but then you have these expressways on both sides. So you have a giant, gigantic uh, gastric ring that is totally clogging, uh, blocking the, uh, the way. So if you want to enjoy the water, water side there, it's, it's not very pleasant. Uh, and still, so this is a lot done, but soul floods keep recurring. So the strategy of death always. Uh, one thing is that it reminds us how important these waterways are because they take care of a lot of the bulk of the, of, of the water. Chonge Chan, it's like Niagara Falls, but you know, on the sides, you have these small, uh, like, like ladders, and you can. In case of flood, you can go up short if, very quickly if you're far from a from a ramp, and that's really it works. Water always finds a way. So either it finds a waterway existing one, or it creates one. And if it doesn't find a way over the surface, it finds a subway. And this one should be called a chiachon, I guess. So soul lights are particularly hit south of the river. And if you look at the most hit uh, uh, neighborhoods, uh, they're pretty much south. So you have forsaken uh, neighborhoods, which uh, have to be uh, fixed later than the ones downtown, which experience the same uh, decades bigger. This is really about our million, basically, uh, since year 2006. But you have also fancier area. And here you really understand why they are called affluent areas. Because if you have if you have a 12 traveling highway in the middle of the street, so it's beautiful asphalt ruin, and it follows the hill like this. It's, it's fantastic if you're on a car. But if there's a flood, the water cannot pierce through, and both sides it's just concrete. So if you're in your car, this, and if you manage to survive, the only thing to do is to go on top of your car and wait for someone to, uh, to, wow. to save you. Uh, so Seoul is literally choked by concrete. And it's, this is the map of Seoul land use in 2010. It looks pretty green, right? And truly, because the dark green parts, that's mostly the mountains. But we know that mountains cannot cope with all the water. That's why the waterways are created in the first place. And the pale green parts, uh, that's residential area. So you do have houses with gardens, but not that much in Seoul. You do have uh, that on there, but you also have a lot, a lot of apartment blocks, and that doesn't let necessarily a lot of water pass through. And if you consider between 1962 and 2010, the population of Seoul has been tripled. The areas that let the water pass through has been multiplied by six. Now it's almost half of the surface, which is totally impermeable. And the natural water absorption rate and evacuation has been divided by two. So of course, the risks of flood are higher. On top of that, you have climate change. But the climate that is changing 
in the first place, it was already very extreme in Korea because all the rainfall of the year falls in two months. And what climate change adds is that the summer rainfall is uh, worsening. And more uh, important for the floods, um, the intense rainfall episodes uh, also are more frequent. And it's not just the, the summers. I mean, the winters are very extreme. So you cannot use certain solutions like the one that were used in New Orleans after uh, Katrina. You know, the, the city was flooded and they decided to roll out pavements and, and, uh, and streets that could let the water uh, pass through. That's pretty uh, convenient. But in Seoul, if you do that and it's minus 17, everything gets closed. So you cannot use these kind of uh, solutions. And climate change also means that you have more droughts. And for example, uh, on an average day, uh, Seoul uses 6% of the water that uh, pass through the Han River. Uh, we use it mostly for, for houses, for, for industries, and for, for other use. And there's 12% we use for different uses, including feeding uh, waterways such as uh, Tongachan. But uh, in November, uh, 2015, um, one day we use 70% of that water. So uh, it means that in the future, we might have some serious trouble to, to, to manage droughts. The droughts also mean that the, um, the soils are not good at, at not as good at, as, uh, as absorbing uh, water than, than before. A good soil that absorbs water, it's, it's dark, it's, it has humus, you, you have fungi, you have uh, Earth forms. Here, you, basically, it's it's barren and it's uh, it's baked. And if water falls, it just takes everything out. So uh, even the parts that are supposed to, to to work don't help. So you can uh, build infrastructures that help cope with uh, floods. For example, you can build tunnels to 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 evacuate. But, uh, and also there are good evolution, positive evolutions, for example, uh, uh, old public uh, buildings uh, and for new important buildings, there are uh, regulations you should, uh, they should be built so that it can absorb uh, the water. And also there are rooftop gardens that, that uh, change the equation. Uh, but it's key to, to, to restore the, the, the biomass uh, at street level also to reduce the heat island effect. So we have to have less concrete, but it's hard to kick the habit. For example, when uh, in the 90s, at the end of the 90s, uh, the Chongwei Highway on top of Chongwei is falling apart. Uh, when I drove over it in the early 90s, it was already forbidden for the big truck. Uh, so Seoul knows that, OK, it's perfect. We have an occasion to beef up our, our system for the sewage. So we'll, as we saw, now we can handle even 200-year uh, floods. Uh, but what to do with this uh, inhibited highway? And the first reaction for Seoul, it's just like for Seoul law. Same thing. It's collapsing. It's ugly. It's an urban nonsense. What shall we do? We just build it bigger and sturdier. Um, luckily enough, uh, and just uh, that just happened before, because that's a few years before, we, we, we built the, the Nebu Expressway on top of uh, Hongdechan and uh, Tongdechan. Um, hopefully, uh, as you know, it, this didn't happen. And why didn't it happen? I think uh, something changed, definitely. We were, we were at war with our waterways. And step by step, we talk about our waterways in terms of recreation, renaissance, emotion. This was a war story. It's turning into a love story. And it starts before Tongyeong. And there are two uh, miracles on the Han River. It's, it's, it's a cultural revolution in policy, but it's very, uh, it didn't make a lot of noise because it's, we're talking about two minor unpopulated islands. Uh, that's Bamsun, uh, which was, okay, it's decided now it's, uh, Bird reserve, we don't touch it, and we don't touch it, and it's growing every every year with sediments. Uh, in 2002, Sun Yudo 
that was a water treatment, one of the first water treatment uh, sites. So it was a romantic spot before, and it was just uh, lost. And it's revived as a as a park, and it's a very good success because for the first time in in, in Seoul, uh, there's a park that respects both nature and the and the cultural industrial heritage. And that's a great success, and we, we must thank uh, the great architect uh, Cho Song Yong for that. Um, so here's a change. Uh, Seoul is changing, Korea is changing, and one of the biggest change for me came from the uh, IMF crisis in 97-98. For the first time, the miracle of, on, the, on the river was over, and that was a bit the end of the last race. Uh, we understood that per perpetual growth was a myth, and there's more, there's more to life than professional success. Uh, my neighbor uh, has been uh, laid off. It doesn't mean that he's incompetent or is, or is useless. Uh, I don't need to keep my car uh, shiny every day. Uh, I don't need to spend three hours a day uh, making up and dressing up. Uh, I can dye my hair. I can wear more casual clothes. So let's we want more time with family and friends. They want more leisure facilities. They want more green spaces. And vintage becomes cool. Old stuff was discarded because this was a sign of poverty. And now people understand that, oh, it, that's my childhood. It has some personal connection to it. That's part of my and identity. And also it has cultural value. So let's rediscover uh, the historic center. So millions blocked on the streets uh, during the World Cup. But also there was this area in Salon, which was very popular among Westerners, but not so much among Solites, except the people who live in and knew the area. And uh, it was uh, revamped ahead of the World Cup and made uh, pedestrian on weekends. And suddenly, so it was a bit Disney find, so lost some of it shown, but on the other hand, you had people, uh, families who came from far, far, far away uh, districts who came with their kids and they uh, bought them Dalgona, see, that's what I had when I was a kid. So there was, there was a, a big change. And uh, it has an impact on policies, of course. So it, it's reflecting on its past. That's also the moment. 2002 is also the inauguration of the uh, Seoul Museum of History, which is a very, my favorite museum, actually. And really, it's a critical about the past, but in a constructive way. And then there's the second Buzer mayor. So 2002 is a mayor uh, election, and In Young Bak uh, pushes his program with uh, a So Okay, Sean is resurrected or rather recreated. So there's a really a, a very ambitious goal. Uh, downtown must be revived because it was it, it really declining. Seoul was booming, but uh, downtown was uh, decreasing. Um, it was also the occasion to bring history in the city back to um, And of course, it is sold, it is more back, so that's put on in it. So there's the way to finance it is uh, okay, you give me land. I give you uh, the possibility to, to, to grow higher. So it took a bit uh, over two years, and it was almost on budget that there was an environmental uh, revolution. So we had a big, big, uh, long corridor downtown. The air quality uh, is up, water quality is up, and temperatures are down. This is Tongachan at the same time, same time uh, a nearby uh, street. That's a great presentation, by the way, for the whole Song uh, project. Uh, even recycled uh, was well done, and people expected uh, a traffic apocalypse uh, because it suppressed this as way, but uh, it went much better. Actually, uh, those lanes were non you know, back game changer. I, I think that mayors uh, are often uh, praised for their. Uh, Hardware with relation, but may, we shouldn't underestimate the, the software part. Uh, for Inyong Bak, okay, that's Shangchan, but also these dedicated uh, bus lanes change uh, totally the city. 
or uh, or say only uh, okay uh, ground one square, but uh, that rebalancing the budget and making the uh, uh, rich, uh, the wealthy uh, district pay for the for the poorer neighborhoods and rebalancing the north and south and uh, uh, region poor neighborhoods that was uh, is key assets. And as far as uh, uh, Bangwon Sun is concerned, uh, certainly not so low, but the fact that he opened the uh, vaults and that uh, big data was shared uh, for everyone and that a lot of innovations, uh, grassroots innovations came from that. Uh, so all is good, but not perfect. Of course, there are caveats. Uh, there were little cons consultation. Some urban villages were lost. Uh, corruption scandal, of course. And it's not so natural because uh, water bed is not natural. And uh, so there's algae piling up. So you have a lot of maintenance to do. And also you, it requires 120,000 tons of water. From the Hangang every day it means over a ton every second, but it's worth it. That's definitely worth it. Still, uh, most waterways remain neglected, so you know some of them will take some time. This is Tangyangcheon, you know, it has all the potential. You have people around, it's very wide, and it's not as desolate. I mean, in, in, uh, in LA, the, the, the flood canals are totally bare and here you have some life and this guy is growing oksusu and he's struggling because there's not water and it's a summer and this is not water this is sand and that's also worth it to 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 uh when you renovate the, the, the waterway uh it, of course there has to be water uh, meanwhile, the Han River uh, is deep evolving, and uh, particularly uh, an acceleration in, in the northeast. And uh, so there are riverside parks, and one of the greatest, well, this is some said it not necessarily the best thing happening that then, but this is very important the cycling trails. This is a fantastic connector, uh, and it's a way of moving across the city and going from one neighborhood to the other in just a minute. It's, it's fantastic. It's a great, great asset for the city. And there is this a uh, lot of work at the uh, city think tank um, for the uh, Hang Hang Renaissance project. So it starts in 2007, but the uh, communications is uh, in June 2010. And that's a strategy to communicate uh, on something that's already ongoing. So it's not just a distant goal, it's, it's in process. So it's, uh, it sells better. Uh, the good thing is uh, the natural uh, connection is, is the natural riversides, uh, there were only 14% it's uh, moved to 87. And there's a lot, hundreds of thousands of trees are planted and not just randomly. There are three levels. By the riverside, it's where you have these natural uh, riversides. It's more ecological, so it's uh, done in a very a studied way to, to make it as uh, sustainable as possible. In the center, that's where people meet, play, have fun. So it's more community kind of uh, forest. It's not really a forest. Here, the trees serve as a buffer. Uh, it muffles the sound from the uh, from the city and the, uh, and the expressways for the people who are here, but also from the outside. You cannot see the waterway, but you can see the top of the trees. And okay, that's some nature. Even if you cannot, even if you don't go, if you don't go there, it's there, so you can enjoy some of it. There is also the way of uh, accessibility and uh, dimension, which is a bit controversial, which is the. Uh, um, the uh, um, West Sea uh, Canal, the Tara Waterway, which is an 18 kilometer uh, canal between uh, Incheon and, and Seoul. Uh, it makes sense uh, strategically because you, you bypass uh, the DMZ so you can uh, go faster, but the business model is not very uh, certain. One thing is here, it says there's holistic vision. So uh, even if it's not as green as this, at least there is a a vision 
to, to cover all bases. You have also the wetlands and so on. Meanwhile, the uh, waterways are also uh, reactivated one by one. And last year, there was a big focus on the waterways and uh, the mayor even spoke about the Chichon Renaissance. And so the city is now promoting its waterside emotion. So um, there's a focus on the, on the waterways and it's not just reviving the waterways, it's really a redefining soul. It's not a, it's a city which is turned towards its waterways, not just the Han River, North and South, and really every single waterway you want to move closer. So the concept is to uh, enhance the, 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 ex the experience uh, on, on the water side and on the waterfront and to better stitch also each waterway with, uh, with the neighborhood. So there are a few projects to start with. And uh, at the beginning of this year, there was a, a contest to bring new ideas for the 30 uh, other, uh, other waterways. So this is already working here. Uh, this is, I'm sorry, I always take care of the pictures. This is Hong uh, Jichan Waterfall. And they just built this deck and a cafe. And so people uh, can enjoy without going, going down. And the proof of concept is this guy in white. Uh, he is in the hospital picture now. And he has his catheter with him. And he would never go even there. He would not even go there. But here he can, he's drawn to it. And he can walk there and take a seat and, and, and have a coffee. Um, so this is simple, but that's uh, different. And you know, uh, nowadays the access to the waterways is usually a very narrow uh, path, which is good because you have more uh, nature around it. But the alley, when you see the purple, it's very often a wider place so people can sit, chat. So it's, there's a better, greater, wider dialogue with the neighborhood. On the other hand, maybe that's a bit more concrete. So it's, it's a trade off. I'm certainly not happy with this one. It's Tangyongchang. And it looks too much like that gathering ring uh, over Tangyongchang. Speaking of which, Tangyongchang, the, 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 sorry, Tangyongchang, the big, uh, problem is that uh, the water sites are too narrow, and here we have a great corridor, but you have this public building nearby. And uh, what they do is okay, we, we make a cafe or something up there, and we make this connector here. So people stop there. It's not just a corridor you pass, we don't want to stop, but here you okay, you stop it, you, you chat together. So there are good and bad ideas, but there will, there will be more ideas coming. And uh, earlier this year, you heard about the great Hangang project, which is also dubbed as Hangang Renaissance 2.0. 2 so um, it's the same. It's already started before, uh, but uh, uh, we make a big splash to announce and to package a lot of uh, a lot of. Uh, IDs, so there's nature, accessibility, attraction, and vitality. And vitality is, vitality is really about uh, real estate and economics. If you take, uh, I will go quickly for this. Uh, this is really about the environmental dimension of the things, more trees, more wildlife, everything. This is about uh, Eco Park covering the expressway. So uh, I think we'll have a more of this coming, it's not like Paris. Paris has got rid of all the cars altogether. Here, I don't see this in the near future, but you could have this kind of transitional uh, covering part of the uh, expressway thing. Uh, for the accessibility, um, yeah, you have different kind of footbridges that go because you can cross uh, the Hangang. Uh, by foot without being surrounded by cars, so that's not so bad. What they plan for Solido is a bit too uh, sensitive-ish for me. Uh, there will test air mobility. It's better to test it over the Hangang than in the middle of the city, definitely. Uh, there are gondola cable cars also. Uh, well, will this view with this scenic or no, we'll see. Accessibility maybe a bit too much. Um, when I saw that there will be a port with ships up to 
5,000 gross tons. I was a bit scared. Is it going to be like Venice? Uh, we will have gigantic uh, cruise uh, ships. Um, that's not a sustainable uh, future we want. But then I checked, okay, the massive cruise ships is more 40 times bigger. So it will not be that big, but still. So I don't know. But what one thing I'm, I'm sure is this is not very nice. And this will be in here in front of Samsung. So we'll see. Uh, there will be attractions, so there's a Lord of the Rings, great uh, um, Ferris wheel uh, by the river. There are a lot of things going with the bridges and Nodul Song, which uh, which was relaunched a few years ago, which was a total failure. So this time they tried to make something more fun. This is uh, Earwick Studios uh, proposal soundscape. Uh, We'll see. There's a second uh, second center uh, in Yoido. Other things, um, and then there's a more business uh, side of it. Uh, this will be private financing. So there's a Hong Kong Development Corporation. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Um, it's the idea is also to diversify the, the the skyline uh, because it's mostly apatu apatu apatu, and here there are a lot of uh, that need to be replaced and it would be more mixed and there's a different kind of trade-offs this time there will be more the creative design which is a bit more subjective particularly from someone who brought us uh, some of it and uh, other marvelous designs um, the first example is uh Akujong waterfront which is here actually uh and the thing is okay you can go up to 54 instead of uh, 35 and you can build this uh green space covering the the highway but it's going to be public which was not the case uh, initially and then there's a foot bridge to uh song Sudong. so uh there were massive gifts that were required to make this uh redevelopment possible that's why it took so long but uh, so citizens demand other goodies and and and, and sweeteners uh, in the region as well. Uh, this vitality dimension also involves very big projects, so it's really uh, major business hubs. So there's Chanchil, which will also include mice. So this is a tower, and I don't know how much it will compete with uh, Coact here, but we'll see. Yoido was a major financial district. That's why also there's more culture up there with the second Sejong Center. And Yongsan IBD returns uh, with now a train depot, uh, former train depot includes, so it's a little bit bigger. And it's already hyped as uh, Yongsan electronic market gone. It's going to be Meta Valley, of course. So something is necessary to that. And uh, of course, it takes more than urban planning to make a successful uh, business hub. And it's a zero sum game, meaning that if one of these succeeds, means that others will fail. So I'll go very quickly through the tributaries of the Han River. Basically, you have four big ones uh, at the corners, particularly the three here. Hongjie uh, is a bit smaller, but it, it balances. No, so again, a lot of words on these slides don't worry. So I, I'm not getting into details because we don't have a lot of time. Yuan Chan itself has 56 tributaries, including the sub tributaries. And among them, 36 alone for Chongen Chan. And uh, that means that half of uh, the tributaries, uh, all the souls are, are related to Chongen Chan. And we'll zoom in a moment. So this is the first part of uh, Tonget Chan territories. Again, don't read this slide. You see a lot of blue because it comes from the blue blood, uh, Chun. And this comes from uh, Namsan, basically uh, Namchon. So this is more this section and that section and this intersection here. Um, and then this is the end of the second half part of uh, within the city limits. So in total, we have 30 tributaries uh, within the 
original city limits, mostly from the north because uh, yeah, Bukhansan and, and, and others are, have a bigger, uh, um, bigger stream. Uh, I want to zoom in the to um, the uh, uh, waterway I was uh, mentioning earlier, which is next to Kot. We are here, right here. This is the waterway. Its name is uh, Hangdong Shan. As you guess, it comes from Hangdong and earlier upstream. It's it was born in Bukhakstan. Uh, so every of course nowadays you have here Samidero, which cuts everything. You notice that here there is a small canal waterway. It follows uh, Pimakol. And it comes out of Young Men's Association. So yes, it's YMCA. We are very close to Nagwon. And um, if you look further east, you notice this weird um, waterways, which go 90 degrees. And here, you don't need to know the story to understand what happened. These guys go, of course, all the way down to Chongetan. And the streets are still surviving, maybe not along this area. There's even a third one here, but it's not mentioned there. It was uh, covered before. Uh, what happened is that, okay, here we have the intersection I mentioned, the blue blood part of Chongetan and all the first batch coming from Namsan. So there you have a lot in case of flood, you have potentially a lot of problems. So you do want to add more. Uh, more uh, waterway that early. So these guys are joining, uh, what's its name? Uh, oh, you on you, I guess, uh, further afield. So it, it uh, joined, uh, it joins, um, don't get shown a bit further. Um, actually, uh, even Angudong John has been partly uh, moved there too. Okay, I spare you the uh, other tributaries of uh, Tongkechon. Tongkechon will not get, get into detail. This was the other day, World Cup Stadium, uh, went to the stadium on the way. There was this uh, surviving, a sign that there is a buried uh, waterway, which is still active in case of thoughts. Anyangchon, okay, uh, I'll skip very quickly. We don't need to get into detail, but you know that there. Uh, there are other, beyond these four big ones, uh, there are other tributaries. Uh, they're not very fascinating at all, but I want to mention Mantuotron because I have a special affection for this one. That's the one which comes from Wakchon and basically follows only law uh, from the beginning. And that's the one that carves this beautiful bell shape. Uh, intersection in uh, then Kyonandong. And um, also that the one which explains why Sosamunapatu has this curve. That's the same one. And um, it also has two arms that are coming from Namsan and they cross the army base, uh, the Yonsan garrison. One, the, the bigger arm basically is the street that cuts the basin to uh, which joins uh, Itawan No and uh, Tangachi. And the smaller arm, it's uh, Henamu, Henamuro going down and then uh, over to Zumyon. So it's interesting if you like Bongjuro uh, and uh, <laughs> if you watched uh, Kemu, the, the host, the creature was created after a chemical dump in the air. US Army base, and it lives in uh, Manchotun, in the tunnel. And uh, that's where it comes out and um, goes mayhem uh, along the Han River. And I think uh, John Denver knows, knows a lot about this tunnel. <laughs> right. well, so, um, there's so many stories we, we cannot get into details, so we've seen a war story, we've seen a 
love story, but how much storytelling is too much storytelling? What we know is that waterways tell us history and stories of soul. Uh, it's fun to compare all the new maps, but not just by watching new maps, you know what happens. You understand why it says a diagonal street there. You understand why this market is here. You understand why this place is named after a bridge. And here, you have Kyo Namdong, Kyo Bukdong, and this bell shape. Of course, there is a waterway here. Oh, of course, there is Yongchon Market here. So you know there was a market there. So you, you knew the shape of the, of the street even before watching the map of the street. It's great to, you, you don't have to restore all the, all the waterways. It's great to, to feel a, a small uh, sheet gets on roar under your feet uh, when you're up in the mountains. But it's sad also to see some waterways completely disappear from memory. And that happens when you have an apartment block which destroys even the shape of the street. Uh, there's no trace of it. And there's also the, the change of address uh, system. Uh, we don't use the DOM uh, system anymore. And we still use DOM system for neighbors we like, or which are very popular, but for a place like Kyonam Dom, well, now it's Ibegi Dom here. It's just, uh, there's no, there's no way this name will survive except uh, in these old maps. Um, so yes, uh, waterways will always scale the future of Seoul, and we saw the Hangang get wider and and it's going shrinking now because its riverside are getting taller and there are more ways to cross it. And uh, we have to to give uh, Seoul some slack because it's an elusive shape shifter, and that's the way we we, we love it. So yes, Seoul needs a natural spaces, curated one, but also unscripted part. And it's not just in the natural part, but everywhere. And we have to respect the character of each village, but it lets each one of them evolve. So when, uh, I'm sorry, when um, Jacques Chirac was elected mayor of Paris in 77, he said in 10 years, I will swim in the same river. Um, we're not only now, are we, uh, are we um, telling, okay, we, we, we might use that for the 2024 Olympics, and there was a championship this weekend uh, for swimming uh, in the same river. It was canceled because there, was, because there were too much rain, uh, and so the water quality didn't hit the standards. So I don't think we will, in our lifetimes, uh, swim in the Hung River, but I think we, would, we might see this, uh, we might see this happen. So I'm running dry and I'm thank you for your patience. So if you want more sediments, it's on my uh, excuse for a blog, soulvillage.com. And if you want the more shapeshifter part of soul, it's on my fiction site, soul villages with an S. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm gonna let you field your own questions. So we'll just we'll open it up for questions. All right. Let people raise their hand. You call on them. And uh, John, if somebody uh, comes in on the chat box, uh, we're on Zoom. Kind of butt in every now and again with those questions, please. Yeah. Okay. The second one from the From here. From there. Oh, sorry. Oh, you've had my baby all the way. You should have told me. Sorry. I I I, I should have. I had some leash. I had some slack, but still. Sorry. All right. Any questions? Or any, maybe if you have stories of, of, uh, of streams, you, what ways you have on memories? Yes. I used to live in Yangdechang. Right. And uh, I really like how they did it. We had three levels of pathways. Yeah. So when we did have flooding, the lower pathway wasn't open, but the upper two were still mm. open, and then that could progressively go up if necessary. Uh, but that was a wonderful part of my neighborhood when right. I lived down there, was to be able to... It changes everything to have a... Walk it, along the water and see people who are out just enjoying... It, change, it changes the mood, yeah. And yeah, 
That's uh, really great. And they they have some certain criteria to to uh, to revive a, a, a waterway. You you have to uh, to have a certain uh, for each kilometer you have to have the possibility certain widths for people to walk by, and also uh, they have to uh, have a certain um, I mean vegetation to add. So there are, you can do it everywhere. So but it's very they, they study quite hard to, to do it right. So they they make some. Mistakes, but uh, yeah. No, thank you very much. For this fascinating story, and I really enjoyed. The, the, thank you. The I especially like your proof of concept. <laughs> I think for me, when I see those examples, that really gives us hope that it's, mm. it's, it's very expensive, right? And it's also but the life that it brings. I wondered in terms of that that cost and. The justification you, you gave us many reasons why, but the upfront cost. How do they? How is that being justified? For example, Tongue Shan has had a, a, a ripple effect across the whole city mm -hmm. with that centralisation. But now it was upfront sole government pays, but then the district governments have to maintain those things after them. It's, well, there, there is some uh, revenue generated by certain activities. Uh, also, it's uh, well, it's part of the budget, but the, for the private, when there's business involved, of course, it's different. For the waterways, it's uh, also uh, a dialogue with with the with the uh, local authorities. And the good thing uh, that it is managed at the at the city level is that. Uh, you can uh, stitch together both uh, sides, even if the uh, districts don't work well with each other. So, but yes, so there's, it's not necessarily a big budget, uh, and anyways, it's maintenance. So yes, there is also maintenance uh, cost for the waterways, uh, but it's just like a, a park. The same story. You have a maintenance cost for, for a park. It's, they're just part of the park system of Seoul. Has it been problematic for the cost element to, to take that on up front? I mean, I know that property developers, the net present value of the land goes up exponentially, but for those paying for it, maintaining it. Because these are riversides, so you don't have to expel people. Now you, you had to at one stage, but nowadays you don't have this, so it's, it's public space, so it's easier to take decisions. And well, the investments are not. It's, Anyway, there's a lot of work, uh, heavy work going every year, so so it's uh, it can be part of the budget. It's, uh, it looks massive, but it's not that massive. And also, it's each time, it's like cosmetic changes at the local level, so it's not all at once. Uh, you don't have all waterways done at once, so it's uh, and it's possible because there's vision, uh, long term vision, because there are. Uh, there are think tanks uh, working on it, and uh, I put the links to the Seoul Institute. Uh, they they they, do, they have a lot of, uh, of uh, it's fun to see how they evolve. So, for example, uh, after Chang'e Chan, there was this fad of uh, restoring um, very symbolically uh, some waterways. So it was just and it was a bit pathetic because it was just you know concrete uh, waterways in in along the streets, you have this in uh, Tiangno, it's Tiangchon, just a few meters, uh, and then cut and again a few meters, or it's Dungakchon, uh, uh, which is uh, well west of Gyeonggokgung, which actually is uh, called Tamchongdongchon, uh, originally. Dungakchon, is, uh, the name was given during the uh, Japanese occupation, but same for Changgechon, which was Kachon. Uh, but it's what's important is that that's a word people use and that's a common word. So. Any? Yes, John. Oh, yeah. Oh, I cannot say, sorry. Yes. This is this is my fiction part. So this is uh, advertising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It is. This is a difference. This is my uh, Dr. Jekyll. Uh, this is Mr. Hyde's side. This is my Mr. Hyde's side. But I'm not hiding it. I'm just shamelessly promoting it. Yeah, well, I think it's because speaking for each other, you know, and you know, it was me speaking, right? Yeah, so what is the issue of one who yeah, share with us more? There are blaring alarms alert systems uh, along, along the street, but yeah. In terms of that connection, just having those uh, crossing the way people connect with the water, they're just so magical. And it, and it makes sense. Yes. Do you know anything about how that has been able to be retained? I know the alarm system, not just not everywhere is the alarm. It's, I just think that's quite magical. Yes, great that there is this freedom, but there are also dark sides. Uh, people committed suicide from 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 bridges, and uh, so. And people get and, washed away too. I know, but right. there's acceptance of risk. Yes, there's an acceptance of, of risk, and also because this is not a dangerous city, so it's changing. But it's it's uh, yeah, and yeah, citizens quite. Own the city. I mean, you can, you can roam everywhere. So that's a nice part of it. Yes, John. Um, thanks for mentioning last week. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. So there's one part if you go about two kilometers upstream, uh, it spreads up in three ways. The uh, right. Uh, I knew that the middle one went under the base and emerged there, and then went up under Shungi Dam. Right. I didn't know about, about the first one that it goes between uh, main coast and south coast. Right. The third one, I believe, goes under Suandong, like kind of along the northern wall. Uh, Suandong a bit south of it. Yes, maybe. Yes, part of it in Suandong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really a, this existing street, actually. I'm it's, curious if you have much experience or data involving how many of these streams still exist. Like, how many have been covered during this? That little loop in uh, Go Down Dome is gone. Uh, yes. So I'm curious. Yeah. You know, what, like, That's a good question. I don't know what, what happened to that section, how they built. Because, 
Yeah, it's gone because they 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 might, maybe they have diverted. It's 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 easy to it's easy to divert, but uh, if you follow the street, but they, there was no work along the street. Uh, okay, it stopped working, but it's okay now. No, 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 it's all right. But yeah, there is still water flowing somewhere. So maybe they made some pipes, but then what happens when the pipes are not big enough? I, don't, I have no idea. That's a, that's a very good question. Yeah. Because it's uh, pretty long already, yeah? Like um, the government doesn't always know when these still exist. I, 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 I don't know really. Uh, I think they are quite keeping track of, of most of them uh, up to a certain size. But she uh, gets on the, the small, smaller, the early stages of, of the streams. There are so many of them, I don't think they keep track of them. But, and there are still some half covered, half uncovered, which are not listed on the on the maps, but you can see them, you can feel them. We were in uh, Kenny Mao the other day, there's one there. Anyway, you can read them on the map. On the map. Right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.